Hello, and welcome to Pan Branch Designs. Today, I'm going to decoupage the lid of this candle. Um, I won this candle at my sister's house. She had game night, and I won this. I love that it's glass. I love the color. So I figure once I'm all done with this candle, I'm definitely gonna wanna use this for something else, even if it's just as a pencil holder or something like that. But I, I wanna do something different with the lid. The first thing I'm going to do is make sure that my image fits on the lid. And now that I'm looking through the paper with a little light behind it, I can tell that it's going to fit perfectly. The first step in transforming the lid of the candle is painting it white. And what I'm using is white acrylic matte paint that I bought at my local craft store. Now that I have the entire lid painted white and it's completely dry, I'm going to put one layer of Mod Podge over the top of the lid. Once the Mod Podge is dry, I then use my Cricut Easy Press to adhere the paper to the top of the lid. The heat from the Easy Press heats up the Mod Podge and then that sticks the image to the top. I make sure that the image is placed on the candle top exactly how I want it. I have my Easy Press set to 255. I usually press it more than once, so 255 is just basically a base temperature that I just tend to use. Then I place parchment paper over the top of the image and press. I don't have a set time that I use to press the image onto the candle top. I'm basically just using trial and error. I set it at 255 and then I press it and then when I notice that it's completely adhered, then I stop. The image on this particular paper is derived from a photo that I took when I was in Cherokee, North Carolina. I was in North Carolina on a sales trip. I really enjoy the Smoky Mountains. If you would like to see the videos and photos that I took during this trip, which includes elk and a bear, click the link in the description below. I also make sure that I give some pressure to the edges to make sure that the image does not lift up on the sides. Once I see that the image has adhered to the top, I file away the excess paper. What I use is an emery board. I purchased it at the Dollar Tree. There's a fine side and a rough side to the emery board, and I use the fine side. Be sure to hold the file straight up and down. Make sure you don't file away at the image itself. The next step is to seal the image using more Mod Podge. So I put one coat of Mod Podge over the top of the image. Keep in mind that the Mod Podge goes on milky looking, but it does dry clear. I'm gonna let that continue drying. And while I'm waiting for that to dry, I figure I will start working on another project. This is the tie for the curtain that is over our bathroom door window. Our bathroom door has glass. I would like for the tie to be more decorative because the curtain is white. And um, I'm not going to decoupage this because I want to make sure I keep it um, in its original state, but I'm going to make a second one. The first step is to cut the faux leather so that I have a new curtain tie. I probably could have just traced 
the curtain tie on the faux leather, but I just decided to lay it on top and then cut around it. Now that I've cut out the faux leather, I'm just checking to make sure that my image fits on the tie. And it looks like it's going to fit perfectly. I'm actually going to rip away the edges of the image so that it will be sort of frayed so that it will adhere and actually blend in better with the faux leather. The image of the two cardinals was derived from two photos that I took of cardinals, most likely in my backyard. I also used this image in a greeting card and they're also on a pair of earrings. I'm using Mod Podge to adhere the image to the curtain tie. I'm going to mark the curtain tie with a little bit of Mod Podge around the image just so I can see where I need to place the glue. Now that I've covered the area with glue, I'm going to press down the image onto the curtain tie and then smooth it out to make sure that there's no wrinkles or bubbles. Now that the curtain tie is dry, I'm going to trim off some of the excess with scissors. Now that the excess has been trimmed off, I'm just giving the curtain tie a once over just to make sure that the edges, the part where the image meets the faux leather is smooth. Um, I feel like it looks a little rough and you can see that line. So I'm thinking I'm gonna smooth it out just by gently using my emery board to file away at some of the paper. The goal here is not to file away at the leather, but more so the paper, just so that I can make sure that the edges are blended in pretty smoothly. I've looked at the image, I filed it a little more, I gave it another inspection and filed it a little bit more. Now I'm pretty satisfied with the way it's blending into the faux leather, so I'm going to cover the image with Mod Podge. I've given the image a chance to dry, and so now what I'm going to do is cover the entire piece of faux leather with another coat of Mod Podge. So the tie is now completely dry. 
I'm not 100% satisfied with the way the edges look around the image, so I'm going to just dab on just a little white paint here and there just to blend the edges in with the rest of the faux leather. This step isn't necessary, but I just am a little critical and I just wanted to make sure that everything blends in so that it looks like a cohesive piece. Okay, now I'm satisfied with the way the curtain tie looks. I'm satisfied with the way the image has blended in with the faux leather. So now it's time to apply the Velcro. I'm using the original tie as a guide as far as the placement of the Velcro. Please keep in mind that faux leather, generally speaking, has two different sides. The main side is the faux leather side, and then there's the backing. It kind of looks like mesh, or maybe it looks like a cottony material. The side that I used for this project was the faux leather side. I attempted both sides of the fabric to see which one would look better, and the faux leather side looked much better, and the image um, just worked better on the faux leather side. I also tested to see whether or not fabric Mod Podge would work on this project, and I just found that the matte Mod Podge worked out better. The lid of the candle is dry, and I think it came out great. It has a matte finish. I didn't want a glossy finish, I just thought that the matte just looked much better. The curtain tie turned out perfect. I absolutely love it. Both papers are available online at pambranchdesigns.com. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.